What is up, everybody? So today we're taking taking a look at the video portion of filtering traffic on a land to land VPN when we're talking about ASAs. So here's our diagram. We have our corporate LAN over here and a partner LAN over here. There's a land to land tunnel connecting them, and now we want to filter traffic so that when our partner our partner LAN initiates traffic to the corporate LAN, they can only hit 172.16.1.100. What we don't want to do is we don't want to disable sysop connection from VPN, and we also don't want to have a hyper specific uh, crypto ACL for our interesting traffic. So the VPN is already in place. We can take a look at it right here. Let's show run crypto run crypto. VPN is actually already up, so we'll do show crypto IPsec SA. Whoops, there we go. And you can see that I'm only building between both slash 24s. I'm not doing anything weird like just permitting 172.16.1.100 on the tunnel. So as it stands right now, if we're over on our partner land, we could tell that to 172.16.1.100, no problem. And we're on core post, we'll log off really quick. So we want to prevent that. The only ports that we want to allow open are 22 for SSH, HTTPS, and ICMP. And then we're also going to put an explicit deny at the end of our access list so we can catch any hits that come across or um, blocking. <clears throat> so to do that, we're going to hop on our corporate firewall and we can actually just kind of minus down the partner firewall because we don't need it right now. We're going to set up our access list. Access list, we'll call it L to L VPN. I don't know what I called it in the blog. I'm just going to rename it. Filter. And we're going to permit TCP from 10110. Going to the host of 172.16.1.100 on port 22. 443. We're going to allow ICMP to only that host. And then finally, we're going to do an explicit deny at the end of our ACL just for the purpose of grabbing uh, any drop traffic. So we can see hit counters. Do deny. So there's our ACL. And the magic that makes all this work, group policies on our, AC, on our ASA firewall. So we'll say group policy partner GP. We're going to say that it's internal. We're going to modify the attributes. We'll say VPN filter the value is L to L VPN filter. We're going to hop on our tunnel group 200 11 100. Actually, let's yeah, verify that. Yep. And under general attributes, general. We're going to set the default group policy to be partner GP. So make sure the tunnel is up when we do this. Okay. Syntax looks right. And you'll note that since the tunnel is up when we apply the group policy, that nothing has really changed. I can still tell that. We're not blocking any traffic yet. In order to do that, you actually have to clear your uh, IPsec security associations. We're going to do clear crypto IPsec SA with our PR201 100. We'll just ping to bring the tunnel back up. All right, tunnel's up. Now, if we try and tell that, You can see that it's just trying, and we'll do a show access list, L to L VPN filter. And on our deny, we're getting hit counts now, showing that we're actively denying this traffic. Let's try and cancel this out. There we go. However, we can. SSH, 
172, 16, 1, 100. SSH works fine. And we'll try and tell that on port 443. And even though it was refused by the host, you can see that the firewall actually permitted that traffic right here. ICMP is working, and we're good to go. <clears throat> so, again, the whole reason that I did the blog post that I'm doing the video is I see this a lot when people are trying to filter connections and filter, tr filter traffic over land-to-land -land VPNs, and they do all kinds of weird stuff, like they disable sysop connection permit VPN, um, which so, if you don't know what that command looks like, sysop connection permit VPN. This is on by default. I mean, I can hit it right here and you can do a show run and it will not show up in the running config unless it's disabled. So that's on by default. What that does is it sets that it's configures the ASA so that all VPN traffic is by default um, permitted um, and allowed through the firewall. If you disable that, VPN traffic when it arrives in your outside interface will follow the same process that any traffic arriving in your outside interface follows and it will be implicitly denied until you add specific permit filters on. I mean, I guess if you if you only have one or two land to land VPNs, that's not a terrible solution. And then you just permit traffic on your outside interface. Uh, I don't like it because I work in a lot of environments when there's dozens and it just makes your outside ACL really, really, really long. And I like the group policy approach because it makes it so your ACL filtering that traffic is specific to just the tunnel group that you're filtering on. So you can have a few land to land tunnels that were not filtered at all, and then you can have a couple that maybe go to partner sites that are filtered. It's just an easier way to go about it. The other weird thing that you see is these super long ACLs for your interesting traffic. And those crypto ACLs, whenever they get to be um, uh, you know, 10, 15 lines long, that can be a lot of overhead. Uh, you have to figure that every line in your crypto ACL, like mine here, bring it up really quick. So every line in your ACL is a separate IPsec security association. It's actually, if you do a show access list, every line is a separate IPsec security association. So if you have it set up so you have like 15, 16 subnets on there and like specific hosts and stuff, it gets to be a lot of overhead and your both firewalls have to track security associations for all that. And if the only reason you're doing it like that is for sake of filtering traffic, there's just a way better way to go about it, which is what I just demonstrated. So again, that's the whole point of the video. Um, I don't plan on doing a lot of ASA videos. I, I try and stick to the rot and switch stuff. But this is one topic that I see a lot, and I figured I could do my part in the world and show a better way to filter this traffic.